Sebastian Mendel Martinez, MMA is here at Cyborg's uh, new, newly opened gym with Jason Perillo. Uh, so, Jason, I gotta ask. This is a you know obviously a huge fight, but it feels like some people are maybe looking past Amanda Nunes in this fight. Is that something that you think about when you go through training to make sure that you don't underestimate anyone and you don't sort of overshoot anything? Well, you know, Chris never under underestimates anybody. I mean, it, it could be. A, a, are we getting ready for Amanda Nunes? Yes. Has she been getting ready for opponents that aren't as as skilled, as 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 accomplished, as as talented as as Amanda Nunes. No, we fought girls that were less talented, that has, were less accomplished, never been a world champion, and she got ready for them as if they could beat her on any given day. So that's how Chris always gets ready for a fight. She doesn't look past anybody. None of the nobody in camp, nobody in her management, nobody in her whole team looks past Amanda Nunes. We know how dangerous Amanda Nunes is. She's a very dangerous fighter. She's a world champion for a reason. So you know, as as far as you know, I haven't heard a lot about. People, I mean, I'll take that back. People do look past Chris, any of Chris's opponents, but everybody also. What I'm hearing is this is the best chance against Chris Cyborg. That's the that's the thing that I've been hearing more of. I agree. You know what I mean? So I don't. I I I haven't been hearing people look past Amanda. And again, we're not looking past Amanda. Um, but uh, yeah. Do you say that Amanda's the toughest opponent she's had in? I mean, perhaps not since her debut, considering that you know she wasn't as experienced then. But in the past couple of years, do you think that Amanda Nunes is the toughest opponent? Yeah, you know, and I've been you know I've been answering the question as far as who is Chris's toughest opponent for a lot of long time. It's always been Holly Holmes, but you know, obviously, you know, Amanda Nunes is is a younger, hungrier, you know, in, in, in the world champion right now. So she's at a different level psychologically. So you know, obviously, she is definitely the toughest opponent that we're going to get in front of and, and probably the strongest as well so um, again that's again why we don't look past her and what do you feel are sort of the biggest dangers that Nunes point, uh, post because Holly Holm is definitely you know a good uh, striking uh, dangerous there but it feels like perhaps Nunes has a bit more tools as such or a few more dangerous weapons I think she's a little stronger with her shots you know and I think I think she's a little bit more aggressive with her shots I think uh, where Holly fights a little bit more defensively and, and counters a little bit more I think uh, man is a little bit more aggressive she has a really good nice right hand that she throws she's got a good leg kick and uh, you know she comes in there she comes in there to hurt you you know and, and she's really offensive and she likes to pressure herself so you know yeah, of course. We she's got an arsenal that we got to be, you know, well aware of. And in the UFC, Cyborg's looked pretty unstoppable in most of her fights there, uh, knocking most of her opponents out in the first round. As a coach, how do you go about finding holes in your fighter who's not really showing any? Well, I guess you take it to the gym, you know, and you, and you see and you see the shots that she gets touched with while she's out there in the fights because she has like Holly, she won five rounds with, you know. So there's a there's, there's a you know great leap, great leap and bound as far as experience she got out of that fight, and she def definitely gained from that experience. Um, you know, she picked up a few things, you know. So you know, she she's going to continue to pick up in these fights, even if it's happening in one or two rounds, but also. You know, we, we 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 try to shut as many holes as we can in the gym. You know, and and and, and, I, and I'm a big advocate of sparring, and you know, unfortunately, she is as well. She's down with the cause, so we get in there, and you know, she gets in there with all levels of athletes. We do we we box with, you know, Olympian boxers, you know, to to world champion or future world champion boxers, and. You know, she gets in there with men, and she gets in there with kickboxers, and she, you know, she goes at it. You know, and, and nobody can go in there and, and really babysit her. You know, no matter how, yeah, unless you're a really big guy. You know what I mean? You, you better go in there and uh, and be ready. And uh, I asked about it in there, and I thought I'd ask you as well. Uh, a potential matchup with Cecilia Brekius in boxing is that something that you, as a coach, would be interested in seeing and perhaps testing her abilities in that area? I mean, you know, sure. I I've always been a big fan of her. Continue to to, to dominate in the MMA world and. and, and could cement her legacy, you know, because I think, uh, you know, I think she has a few more, you know, a little bit more noise to make in the MMA world. Um, obviously, as you get towards the end of your career, you know, or, or the later stages of your career, I should say, I still think she has some good years left in her. Um, you know, you want to you want to capitalize on it the most you can financially, but also at the same time, she has a hunger and a passion for boxing. You know what I mean? It's yeah. something that me and her talk about quite a bit, and it's something she really wants to do. And and, and, and that's a decision that she made. I'd, I would be very supportive of it as well because I think she has the ability. You know, I, I see these opponents that, you know, you know Cecilia and these other girls are in there with. I I, I see my fighter Chris Cyborg when she gets in there with you know. Who was Raquel, Raquel Miller? I believe it was. I've seen her in there with Carissa Shields, and I've seen her in there with you know high level. I got a national champion that comes out from San Diego. Um, 
Jill. Sorry, Jill, I forget your last name right now. But at the end of the day, um, she's got the tools for it. She does it. She's got the power for it. She's got the reflexes for it. And she's got just great instincts. I mean, can Chris step in there with with no professional boxing fights and sit there with, the, with one of the best female boxers of all time? Uh, I actually believe she can. That's the type of athlete she is. That's the type of mentality she has. It's just the type of skill that she has. You know, she's definitely a freak of nature. And as you said, this is uh, going back to the Nunes fight. You and I, I'm inclined to agree that Nunes is definitely one of the tougher opponents. What do you feel has been sort of like the story of a training here? Has there been anything that stuck out or differentiated itself than, uh, as opposed to other opponents? It's, as far as training, getting ready for yeah. Amanda, is there anything like that we're, that we're worried about or concerned about? Yeah, is or that, anything that's been different? Anything that's you know what? No. I mean, I mean it, it's always, you know, Chris is training year-round. So all year round, she'll she'll try a lot of new things. You know, she'll go to different, she'll go to a lot of different gyms, and she'll just try different conditioning workouts, different kickboxing workouts. You know what I mean? She'll go to, you know, she does a lot of she's a lot of off off time training. So she's always in the gym. When it comes down to the last six to eight weeks, it's 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 the same it's the same deal. We're getting ready for a specific opponent, whatever. Whatever specifics we're really focused on, that's going to show up and that's going to be worked on in the sparring. And, uh, and then when, it, when we want to work on it from the sparring and things that we want to work on, we take it to the gym, whether it's in the wrestling practice, the jiu-jitsu practice, or boxing practice, or movement practice, whatever it is. You know, we just try to go back to closing whatever hole she has and keep her fighting her game. You know, and that's what I'm all about is getting her to fight. Her, Chris Cyborg is the best fighter on the planet. You know what I mean? So, you know, and I tell her all the time, I said, listen, a lot of times you get information from people that can't fight their way out of a wet paper sack. You know what I mean? Part of, you know, and it's no disrespect to them, but you're a better fighter than they are. You know what I mean? You've done more than them. You've seen more than they have. So at the end of the day, we got to keep doing what you're doing. You got to pick up on what you know that you need to pick up on. You got to work on what you know you need to work on. And we got to, again, close whatever holds we can, get you to fight your fight, get you to be in the head that, space that you need to be in. If you're that girl, I don't, I, I don't see that girl yet. I don't see that girl that's going to stand in front of that. Because if you're you, with your heart, your mindset, your skill set, I mean, where's she at? You know, and that's the way I look at it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds extremely promising, and it's a fight that I think fans back home should definitely be keeping an eye out for at UFC 232, December 29th. Jason, thank you very much.